Welcome to another episode of Sailing Doodles. Before we get this one underway, I want to make a couple quick announcements. Next week, we'll be sailing a new boat. It's an Oceanus 50. It's currently up in Vancouver. We're going to be sailing it down the west coast to Cabo San Lucas. And then in the spring, we'll be sailing across the Pacific over into Asia. You can check out sailingdoodles.com to see the sailing schedule. Also, we have a new crew member. Her name is Laura. She's a nurse. She's also an experienced sailor. And she was actually in episode 24 of Sailing Doodles, starting at about 10 and a half minutes in. You can go back and check that one out. And we have some swag for sale. You can go to sailingdoodles.com to see how you can buy your Sailing Doodles t-shirt. In the last episode, it had rained on us for a few days, but we still made the best of our time. Finally, the sky is cleared and we had some sun signs, so we decided to do some island hopping and check out some of the recommended anchorages by Gulf Charters Thailand. So we left Koh Mak and sailed up to Koh Nam. There was still no wind, so it was another day of motoring. The anchorage at Koh Nam has to be one of the most beautiful I have ever seen. Just a thin little strip of beach connecting the island, surrounded by reefs and great snorkeling. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful turquoise water and the setting out of a postcard. Even if you're not a sailor, Thailand has plenty of absolutely gorgeous resorts where you can vacation in. We spent just a couple beautiful hours there, and then we kept moving. We left Koh Nam behind and sailed over to almost as beautiful Koh Wai. Once there, we dropped the dinghy and headed into shore. The beach is protected by a pretty large coral reef that you have to pick your way through. You can get a better view of it from the air for sure. The reef stretches the entire length of the beach and is just a gorgeous place for snorkeling. The resort itself was mostly still closed, although there were quite a few tourist boats and snorkeling boats visiting the island. So we landed the dinghy ashore and decided to do some exploring. Although the restaurant itself was closed, they were still serving adult beverages. Good for us. Okay, this sign caught my eye over here. I have to show you. Beware of rats. So basically, if you, take, if you take any food back to your bungalow, don't leave it there. The rats will come in and invade your place. So note to yourself, to me, to anybody, don't, don't encourage rats. <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of the, the resort? Kowai Paradise. Kowai Paradise. Yeah. How long has it been it's here? A, yeah, it's a real paradise. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you have you rent little cabanas? Yeah. How, yeah. how much we, do you rent the cabanas we, for? We have a accommodation for start from five hundred. Oh really? Until seven hundred, but we have a shared bathroom. Okay. Yeah. So five hundred baht for a shared bathroom. Yeah, and okay. seven hundred also a big room. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That yeah. sounds well. That's really. We have uh, about thirty rooms. Okay, thirty rooms. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can we go walk around yeah. for a little? Okay. No Thanks. Okay. There we go. See Co you then. Yeah. See. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Uh, 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 chokti. 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 There you go. Have a good trip. There you Cheers. go. Thank you. So we walk down the beach to go explore the resort. The cabanas have been closed up for a few months and still needed a good cleaning, but you can get a good idea what they look like. All right, let's check out one of these $16 a night bungalows, see if we can look into it. I don't know, sounds like a good deal to me. I mean, it's just a little hut. I doubt there's air conditioning or anything. So that's it, you just got one little light. You have one little light that might work. And a little bungalow, but for $16 a night, it's all yours. But it does have a nice view and a nice deck, so for $16 a night, if you're kind of the adventure traveler, and that's the thing about Thailand, you can come here for $16 a night and get, yeah, it's nothing nice, it's nothing special, but it's on the water. $16 a night, you get that. And the restaurant is, you know, dollar beers, and your meals are $3 a piece, and I mean, you could be here a month and spend, I don't know, $16, so you're looking at, so you're, you're looking at less than $500 to stay here for a month, and then you're probably gonna spend another $500 a day, $500 total on food and booze for the month. I mean, so for $1,000 a month, you can live on the beach in Thailand. It's amazing. I mean, it's nothing special. Depends on what you want out of life, maybe. I used to be, I used to have my priorities wrong. I used to think I had to have the flash car and the nice house and all that until everything, until everything changed for me and I'm much happier now living the Spartan lifestyle, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm getting to see a lot of the world that people don't get a chance to see. You can come to Thailand, sail around on your boat and live well very well for a thousand dollars a month absolutely that's going to dinner every time you want you know it's going to lunch anytime you want that's having a good time so we're doing you know we're bringing this boat uh starting in a couple weeks starting we're going to bring the boat from vancouver all the way over to thailand once we get to asia over here my plan would be to buy another boat and uh, sail on asia and boy i may not ever leave i mean it's like this people are so friendly it's such a nice place i mean why wouldn't you They even had a pretty unique ferry to bring people in from the tourist boats. So we headed back out to the boat to pick up Kim and then motored in to get some beach time. So after spending the afternoon in Kauai, we headed up to Bang Bao for the evening. These are the things we have to deal with? Yes, this is sailing. This is sailing, it's fixing something before we anchor right over there. We gotta pull our sails down and currently the head sail is stuck up. Why you might ask is because the furler line got tangled up. But you've got it undone already? What happened is the furling line somehow got underneath or around all this and ended up binding up underneath the pulley here. And uh, so we had to take the furling line out all the way and now we are rerunning it. So with the problem rectified, it's time to roll in the headset. We dropped anchor and bang bow just in time for the sunset.
That evening, we headed into shore to one of Kim and Bill's favorite restaurants, Buddha View, for dinner. The neat thing about Buddha View is that the tables are right above the water with an open floor. Jordi. Well, that was like the most expensive meal we've had here. It was also pretty good, so. But still, for three people, plenty of wine, $25, $30 a person, not bad. So the next morning, I ding it into the pier to go check it out. The pier at Bang Bao is absolutely massive. While there are quite a few active fishing boats, it's mostly used as tourist boats for snorkel and island adventures. The part of the pier closest to the water is full of shops, resorts, guest houses, all kinds of things there. Pretty neat place. Okay, we are on our way. We're gonna, we have a driver coming to me to say, gonna take us on a little tour around the area, of Bang Bao area. Uh, go up the west coast, apparently there's some really good sandy beaches there. And there's some elephants that'll swim out there on the beach or something like that. And there's like a river where we might take a little water taxi tour on and a few other things. So should be a fun little day. These are the taxis, although they're kind of used like buses on the island. Okay, now we are going to see some elephants apparently. They, uh, walk them down to the beach and I don't know it's like a baby elephant they walk them down to the beach or something I don't know it'd be kind of cool I don't know if they swim or not we'll find out but it's a baby elephant <laughs> how cool is that not fun oh hey buddy hi <laughs> wow How did you get down that? No way. Wow. That's a... That's a nimble elephant. You think that's a cute butt? <laughs> you got some priorities. You got some... I think you're a little off there, but... That's a nimble elephant, man. He might have done this a time or two. How are you? Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, really? You can feed him? Banana. Oh, you see that, huh? <laughs> you want some more? <laughs> That's hilarious. I can honestly say I've never walked with an elephant or really pet an elephant before. I don't have any more right now. We'll give it to you in a minute. We're going to play in the water. He's eyeing me, side eyeing me for sure.
loves this. Wow, look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's not drowning, is he? I mean, what is he doing? It really was neat to be able to swim with the elephant and it cost a thousand baht, which is about $30. Open it up. Hey. <laughs> They're quite ambidextrous with their tongue. Oh, you even said thank you. <laughs> That's a cutie. That's really cool. Swimming elephants, who knew? So after the really neat experience of being able to swim with elephants, it was back to the taxi to head up island. All right, now we are at the white sand beach and on the beach there's apparently a bunch of little funky coffee shops and restaurants and bars and stuff like that. So we're gonna have, a, have lunch at a place called the Rock Sand. Uh, first impressions here, I mean this place, uh, this side of the island's built up a lot more than I thought. After seeing the other side, you know, there's not a whole lot going on. It's kind of, kind of a nice sleepy place. This place has a lot going on. The taxi dropped us off at one of the nicer resorts, but that's not what we were interested in seeing. All right, so all these places over here, uh, there's no road accessing any of this. The only way to get to it is by the beach. So, you know, if you're lugging a whole lot of luggage, you wouldn't be able to get it real easy, but kind of makes it an off the beaten path kind of place. It's, uh, I don't know, my kind of place. Definitely a different style than the high end stuff, like just right there. It's all you built with driftwood and all that stuff. It's kind of cool. Well, we were on our way for lunch. Uh, we got sidetracked for a pre-lunch beer. So, cheers. Cheers. And uh, not a bad place to do it. This part of the island was mostly frequented by backpackers, so it had a really funky feel to it. Not exactly sure what this is. Interesting though. It's 300 baht a night for. Oh, I'd like to. Hey, that's pretty cheap. That's less than ten dollars a night. I, mean, I guess we go up this way. Pay three, stay four. And you get your fourth night for free. There you go. This place had a really off the beaten path and cool vibe to it.
And for $9 a night, who wouldn't want to stay here? After lunch, it was back to the taxi to head to the river. All right, we made it to Bonnirimnam. I don't know how you say it. Anyway, we're gonna go find the river and go down it somehow. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Lining the river was a ton of restaurants and guest houses and resorts. Pretty neat place and very inexpensive. I was excited to see that the place had a sweet little golden retriever. Most of the resorts have their own little water taxis, although this one's motor quit working so they were trying to get pushed by another water taxi. The water taxis there are not the most agile of craft, so they were having some problems. They ended up transferring the guests to another water taxi and delivered them up the river. And for the sunset, we made it to Rostaview. Not a better place to watch it on the island. There's actually quite a few Rasta bars on the island. I think it has something to do with their laid back culture. All right, it was a fun little day. We got some stuff done, had some lunch on the beach, walked on the beach, flew the drones, swam with elephants, really. I mean, crazy. It's a lot of fun. So, hey, there's a new adventure tomorrow. Well, it's our last day sailing. Last day motoring. Yeah, motoring. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We've had uh, the head sail up, what, twice? I think so. Yeah, so. I like the most wind we saw was 10 knots, something like that. Oh, I think we saw 14. 14. But, but uh, it's that kind of it's that time of the year. The winds are shifting, I guess. So there's not a whole lot of winds. But in a couple weeks, it's the sailing season here. It should be sunny skies and I guess more consistent winds. So from the northeast. From the northeast. There you go. All right. Well, we'll head on back to uh, Cochang, Chichang, Cochang, whatever. The Gulf of Thailand sure is a beautiful place to sail, and I'm definitely gonna miss it. But I'm sure I'll be back someday, and I'll spend more time sailing around for sure. All right, that is Salak Pet in the background. That's the base of operations for uh, Gulf Charters Thailand here in Koh Chong. Uh, they're here during the winter season and the summer season. They moved over to Koh Samui. So I wanna thank them so much, and the crew here, uh, for allowing me to kind of hang on and sail with the guys for a while. It was a lot of fun, so a lot of cool places. I de definitely recommend you coming out here. Uh, it's a different kind of cruising ground. I really like it. So, And I also want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Supachat. Uh, thank you so much for letting us use your boat. And it's a pretty nice boat. It's for charter down here. You guys can get on it. 
If you'd like, just go to GolfCharterStyland.com. It's a pretty gorgeous view out there. So be sure to check us out next week as we make it to the new boat and welcome our new crew member, Laura. And check out SailingDoodles.com to find out how you can join us on the boat.